James Bird is someone the law enforcement community knew. We knew him because he'd been in and out of our out of the jails. Uh, nothing real, real major. But James Bird was a good man. He always was uh, willing to help you or do what you want to do, and he, he liked to sing, play the piano, you know. And I, I kind of like that, you know. Everybody in the apartment would talk about Bird's boy. He said he he go put Jasper on the map. Now he's recording, <laughs> but it happened a different way. He had a lot of humor, and he keeps us laughing at all times. And he took pride in himself, and he knew who he was. And couldn't nobody take that from him. he come in there, he have to sing a song, he'll tell a joke, he do things, you know. And we miss that of him. And a lot of us have a weakness in our life that um, we might not never tell, but we know we have a weakness in our life. And I'm not ashamed that my brother did drink sometime. That was, that was him. But he's still my brother and I love my brother. Sometimes people don't walk the way that you think they should walk. While I'm on his teacher's journey. And they were drinking that night. And they all had the reds because they couldn't find the the party and the girls. And they turned on Martin Luther King and Bird was walking down the road. We probably asked them for a ride somewhere. Mr. Bird ended up getting in the back of the pickup truck. That they drove down that logging road deep into the woods and they started getting out drinking beer. And at some point during this partying, we think, is when they basically attacked that man. Now, he was probably intoxicated pretty good. It wasn't much of a struggle to get him down and get that chain wrapped around him. We don't know whose idea it was. You know, it was like three coyotes on a rabbit, you know, once it started. I started hearing a little mumbling on the radio about a man had found what appears to be a body in Huff Creek. I've got the mentality that this is a hit and run accident. And as I cross uh, Huff Creek Bridge, the little bridge, I start noticing a drag mark. And I follow that for a couple miles and I'm thinking to myself, I said, this is going to be the easiest hit and run wreck that we've ever worked because all we're going to do is follow this canted tire to the house, wherever the guy's going. I got down to the to where James Bird's body was. And then there was some evidence there that indicated that's probably not what it was. So while I was there where the body was, they called and said they'd found a, another part of his body at that house. Those, those y'all marks, that I, what I thought was y'all marks, turned and uh, went down a little, what we call the logging road. It's pretty apparent then that somebody had been on the end of a rope or a chain being drugged behind the vehicle. At the church, uh, I warned to them that there still wasn't any identification made on who it was. We called all the young men together who were in the church, and we informed them to be careful, because we didn't know who it was or how widespread it was. So go home and stay inside. I was spreading the kitchen up, and then I said, look back the door, I said, Mom, here comes some police coming. And she said, police? I said, yes. I said, is that James Earl Carter? No, I was raised with James Earl, so I said, is that James Earl Carter? I said, well, he coming up here for the two more cops with him. So I went to the door, let in and everything. And James Earl took his hat off, looked at me. And I said, uh-uh. And he dropped his head. And I said, no, I knew what he was going to say. I said, no. 
and that was Hoi. That was a, a, a moment that I'll never forget in my life. To see the hurt in my mother's face. Because uh, she had heard about the body and how they had destroyed the body. And we just could never imagine that it was Jane Virgin. <laughs> 